Hi everyone, I am Taru and welcome back to my channel IELTS with Taru where I'll be sharing with you lots of uh, materials, tips, resources that can help you prepare for your IELTS exam. Well, in today's video, I'll be talking about the familiarization uh, well, with the IELTS exam itself. So it's like the whole video is based upon what IELTS is, uh, the types, the duration of the exam, the modes, the format, the band scores, and, and, and a lot of things surrounding it. All right, so let's get started. Right. In case you haven't subscribed to my channel, please consider doing that because there are a lot of uh, quality content in there. You can try it yourself. So tips on uh, listening, on writing, on reading, and a lot of things that can help you prepare for your IELTS exam. All right. So first things first, what is IELTS? So it's an English language proficiency test that assesses the candidate's skill in four areas, listening, speaking, writing, and reading. And there are different band scores that are given. So from non-user to an expert level, that is the band score nine. So these are the band scores which are given, which will be on your uh, the mark sheet, what, what we say the TRF, yeah, the test result form. And uh, the sample test link is in the description below so that you can see what an IELTS test looks like, the layout format and everything. So these are the band descriptors or band descriptors which I just talked about. So for the band one, the non-user until uh, band nine was an expert user. Now I took my IELTS test and my score was this uh, in all the sections. So listening 8.5, reading 8.5, writing seven and speaking eight. And this is the CEFR, that is the, again a level uh, given by the through this common European framework of reference. And um, so if you see my my score, yeah. So I had overall band eight and the C CEFR level is C1, which is like a proficient user category. And my CLB was nine. So you can just pause the video and have a look and see what the band descriptors over here are and you know try to see try to relate okay um now these are the different books that you will come across uh when you prepare for ielts i use this one so this has the the the, the uh, test papers from the previous tests and the uh, samples you know the, the 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 actual tests and the reading all the sections uh, are there reading, writing, listening, and the speaking prompts. These books are easily available on Amazon, but also if you Google, you can practically find everything. Okay, uh, coming to the types of tests. So there are two, which is academic and the general. So academic is basically for the higher education or for professional registration purposes, like the post the postgraduate courses. So you have to check with the universities, like uh, what scores do they accept? Most of them, they take the academic test scores. And the other one is the general, and uh, it's usually for the immigration purposes to countries like Canada, New Zealand, and uh, Australia. But the test format, well, as I mentioned before, there are four sections, uh, distance speaking, writing, and reading for both academic and general. Now, let's have a look um, what these section contains, what are the timings and number of questions and, and things uh, around it. So I'll just quickly uh, go to this slide where I have all of them together. So basically, if you go for academic, you will have these four sections and for general also, you'll have the four sections. Um, Listening, there are four sections and there are 40 questions and you get approximately 30 minutes. Again, for general, it's the same. The speaking also remains the same. So it's like duration is just 11 to 14 minutes and there are three parts to it. Same goes for general. In academic also, uh, in academic, there's a writing test. Also in general, there is a writing test. However, the contents differ in terms of task one especially. So for task one, uh, for the academic is basically the you have to describe a diagram or a flow chart or a graph and the task two is an essay type whereas in general the task one is uh, you have to write a formal or informal letter 
and uh, the task two is again the essay type. So that's why the different colors, if you can, if you noticed here. Uh, so I'll just move it over here for the reading part. Again, uh, both of the uh, test types have this has this section. Excuse me. Um, three passages are there, forty questions. Here also three sections are there, forty questions. The difference is that uh, the reading passages for academic. Uh, for uh, for academic, they are more challenging or um, I don't want to use the word difficult, but yeah, they are more challenging. And uh, for general, they are they are based upon you know the day to day uh, life. So it's it's uh, relatively less um, difficult. I, if you if put it, let's put it that way. Uh, coming to the section and question types, um, again in academic and general, as I said, it's the same. So um, the listening will have four sections. Section one with the conversations will be there with a talk or chat between two persons, for example, booking or inquiring about a trip and things like that. So you will hear a recording and they will talk and then you have to uh, answer. Uh, section two will be a monologue. Uh, section three will be a conversation again. It can be between uh, up to four people, between two to four people. Section four, again, will be monologue, which will be kind of an educational or an academic lecture. Uh, these are the type of questions which are asked, the multiple choice questions, intense completion, label diagram, maps, or matching or uh, connection. Or speaking again, um, there are three parts to it. The first part is like a general, more you know, introduction and interview on daily topics, like what do you do, or what kind of job do you do, you work or study, things like that, or where you live, and it lasts for about four to five minutes. And part two, a cue card is given to you, and you're given a minute to prepare to make notes, and then two minutes to speak. Uh, part three is a discussion, which is uh, basically the questions are based on the topic given in part two. So you have to expand basically your views about uh, what you discuss in part two. And the total time is around four to five minutes. Uh, the thing is that for the when you book the test, the reading, uh, listening and writing test, they happen at the on the same day, whereas the speaking can be either before or after that. Or also on the same day, but you when you go to the website, so by IELTS or IDP website, uh, then you can just go and uh, book your exam. Then you can see the choices of the days and the timings. By the way, everything is also there on the all this is also there on the official IELTS.org website. The link is in the description below, so that you can uh, go and visit and uh, play around. But this is just for to give you a quick general overview of what is it all about. Um, then again, in uh, general, again, the colors are different because it's slightly different for the academic part. Again, there are 60 minutes, same goes for general, except that the task one is more of describing or summarizing or explaining a graph, travel chart or diagram, whereas in general, it's more of a formal, informal letter. Uh, task two essay is also the same. Uh, uh, no, I mean, the task two is the same. It's like an essay. Here also it's an essay. It's just that it's been worded a little different so that you're uh, answering, uh, you know, the way you answer is slightly different. It's just the word, the question worded is different. And also uh, the questions asked in um, general are more on a day-to-day -day basis, on a daily uh, topics compared to the academic ones. They are more abstract over here. So the questions are worded differently and are more abstract compared to GT, just like I said. Uh, this is just a sample just to show you for the task 1A academic how it looks like. So you have to basically summarize the information. You see a bar chart over here. Um, you have to write 150 words in this one. Uh, and then here, uh, 250 words, you have to write like an essay. So these are the, this is just one type of a type of question that can be asked. Not this question per se, but to what extent do you agree or disagree? Like it can be a discussion or it can be opinion. They can ask problem solution, cause solution, advantages or disadvantages types of essay. So for the general writing, uh, the total time is again 60 minutes. And this is the task one formal informal writer, which you have to write complete within 20 minutes. And the task two is again like a essay, just like we had for the academic task. Uh, the time to complete is um, will be given 40 minutes and you have to write 250 words. 
Now this is like a two part uh, uh, question. So this is another question time. Um, then for the reading, uh, again, the same thing, except that the, the nature of the passages are different. This is more like, uh, and they're taken from authentic materials from journals, magazines. And again, um, it's basically more challenging these passages and longer than that of uh, than those than the general ones. But the question asked are like the matching or the heading information, true, false, not given here. You have uh, the same question type, but you have the yes, no, and not given, and you have MCQs as well. And uh, again, the matching headings or the information and uh, all those things. Now. Coming to the marking, like what are the band descriptions and the band scores? So if you see, this is for the academic and this is for the general. Um, so if you would like to score, if you want the IELTS score for of nine, um, then you have to score at least 39 questions, right? Whereas for general, it is slightly tough. So you have to score, um, you have to get a 40 if you want to really score a nine. Um, so there are no negative marks uh, for not answering. So even if you don't, if you miss something, just write something, just guess maybe, you know, who knows it is, it comes out uh, correct. For the reading, again, the academic module. So this is the band score. Uh, so, and this is the band score for the general one. Again, you can see the difference here. Um, these are the band descriptors and by band descriptors, I mean that uh, these are criteria. So this is like band nine. What does it mean? So there are four criteria. This is the writing task now I'm talking about. So the task achievement, coherence and cohesion, lexical resource and grammatical reign and accuracy. These are the band scores which are awarded. Again, the same goes for writing task two. Then for keep speaking again, there are band descriptors. Uh, it's like based upon the fluency and coherence, lexical resource, grammatical range and accuracy and pronunciation. And let's see how the scores look like. So for example, in listening, it's 6.5. Reading somebody scores 6.5 and writing 5 and speaking 7. The total is 25. Now this total score is divided by 4 and it gives 6.25. So uh, we round off to the next half band and overall is 6.5. Similarly, if the score is like uh, 6.125, we round off to the whole band, it is less than 0.25, so the score is not 6.5, but 6. You can just pause the video and have a look. Then coming to the mode of delivery, so you can either go with computer-based or you can go for paper-based. Um, which one to go for? If you have any confusion or doubt, I have made another video. and uh, The link is in the description, so you can have a look. Uh, again, the four sections are there in both of them. Uh, there's no, the, the only thing, like one of the things which I can tell you, like, of course, because there's a layout, so there's one big screen and it's divided into two panes. So one, you have the questions and the other, you have to write the answer, type in the answers. Uh, and in case of listening, like, uh, because it's paper-based, so I'm talking about listening paper-based. So when you he he listen to the recordings, you write your answers on the question paper. And once the recording is over, you will get 10 minutes to transfer those answers, which you scribbled or noted on the question paper onto the answer sheet. Whereas in computer delivered, it's not an option because you hear and then you type it on screen right away. Yeah. So which one to choose? Uh, as I told you, there's a link in the description below. So that is it for now. And uh, I hope you like this video. There are a lot uh, of, uh, there are more videos in which I have summarized my IELTS journey. And I hope I can uh, help you guys uh, with your IELTS preparation. So if you haven't subscribed to my channel, consider subscribing to it and have a look. There are lots of videos on, um, well, it started with these videos. So there are videos on uh, reading and writing and uh, tips on listening. Uh, yeah, so and how to start basically your IELTS journey also. That's the latest one. So have a go, have a look and um, yeah, good luck with your preparations. And if you have any questions, please tell them, ask in the comment section below and uh, I'll be happy to help. 
All right. Uh, good luck with your preparations. I see you next time. Bye bye.